Hey, welcome back to the channel. I've got a 2018 Ford Transit to show you. Uh, this was a passenger van when it came in and now is an adventure camper van. So uh, I hope you enjoy. We did a lot to this van, both outside and inside. So I'll give you a walk around tour of the outside and of the inside, showing you what can be done with one of these vans. Super stoked about it. Uh, it's hot off the press, just wrapped up a couple little details. Clients coming in here in about an hour or two. Um, just kind of go through it and um, learn about all the systems that we have in this van, how to use it, uh, what to expect when she's out uh, camping and, and uh, road tripping in this thing. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoy. Like, subscribe, check the links below. Any um, promo codes that I have for some of the products that are in here, I will um, keep active on that as we go. Um, and as things change, any, like I said, anything that I can uh, throw your way, I will. So um, do check the, the description below and I'll, I'll try to keep those active. All right, a couple things I want to point out on this van on the exterior modifications that we did. Uh, the front got a Van Compass 2.0. Uh, this is a lift kit for the front of these Ford Transits. It brings the front up about two inches. Uh, and then I added a half inch in the back. And I think that's a function of this being a 150 instead of the 250 or 350 van that you need to do that lift. We also up the tire size um, by a two inch, or the, the diameter is two inches bigger. These are uh, BF Goodrich all-terrain KO2s. And so that further lifted the van up. I'm really pleased with the way the stance um, turned out on this, and I think the increased clearance will be a good thing. Uh, also from Van Compass is a lift for the shock mounts. So under there you see um, that right there is a van compass part. Typically that hangs down an additional uh, two, two, three inches, uh, I'd say two. And so this brings that up, makes it to where you've got a little bit more clearance when on some rutted roads or, or uh, some gravel and some rocks. So we did that. Also, this van did not come with the uh, turn signal indicators in the rear view mirrors. So using factory Ford parts, um, that's a little modification that you can do. The wiring is in the door, so it's just a, a matter of getting the lenses and the bulbs and, and the wiring in there. Top of the van, we've got a Fiamma F65. Uh, these are not designed to work with a Ford Transit medium roof, uh, but we did uh, using the mounting adapters that are meant for a sprinter to add um, a, some aluminum uh, in a couple different ways and that got us the, um, the support that we needed to run this thing out. Uh, it took quite a bit of doing but um, definitely worth it to have that full awning. Uh, otherwise you would have to put a, put a full basket rack on here um, in order to hang that, hang that awning on it. So it's, it's pretty cool. But that is a pretty cool mod for this van. And then also on the ceiling um, is the Max Air fan. This is an automatic one, so with the remote control. And then we've got two 190 watt solar panels from Grape Solar on there. Uh, pretty obvious that we put the flare space uh, flares on here. So because this was a passenger van, that meant taking the rear uh, quarter windows out and then putting these uh, flares back in. I painted those um, same color, but in satin, um, just to give a little bit of contrast. And then these are CR Lawrence awning windows that um, are installed inside the flares. So um, pretty cool look, definitely a lot of functionality and uh, definitely adds to the bed space, which you'll see in a bit. Uh, moving forward uh, behind the driver, we took out the factory solid window and added a slider window from Van Windows Direct. This has um, a screen that uh, will be installed on it, but real nice function, especially there uh, at the galley. Moving down, we've got a shore power plug from Park Power, and then we have our gray water outlet. Kind of a cool feature that I did on this. 
As you can see up there, I've got an electric valve, so that way from inside the van, you can flip the switch and uh, dump that. And then a 10 gallon gray water tank uh, installed under here in the van. All right, here's the back of the van, doors open. You can see we've got some curtains hanging in the back door. I made these from uh, a blanket, just a throw blanket that I purchased off of Amazon, and then was able to cut up, put some, rebind it, and then, uh, and then it snapped up to the top and it has some uh, bungee uh, attachments so that you can roll it up and, and stow it in place. Uh, this is the, the garage area. Pretty large storage. Um, we'll move in here. This is the water fill for the gray water tank. We have a 10 gallon gray water tank. Let's turn the light on. And so that is kind of a window into the gray water tank. You can see there, it's only uh, just a little bit full. It just has a little bit of water in it. But this way, uh, when you're single-handed and just kind of um, trying to fill that tank, you have an option of seeing what the water level is and not running the risk of overfilling and making a big mess. Um, obviously, we put the lights um, to light this area up. Underneath here, uh, in this uh, box, we have a removable panel and a removable shelf. Uh, in here is the Wabasto furnace. This is an Evo 40. Uh, this is uh, tapped into the gasoline uh, tank on the, the stock uh, van. And so this will run and uh, be thermostatically controlled to, to give you whatever temperature you want here. Um, heating wise, not cooling wise, of course. So that's pretty cool. And then uh, you can see that duct is in here. Uh, behind this is actually the factory. Because this was a passenger van, it had the factory rear heat and air. And so I wanted to retain that system. So what I did is I ran the Wobosto through the black hose that you're seeing. It actually goes up through this chase where it originally did, but I had to rehouse it. And then it runs into the factory plenum that goes and feeds the interior outlets. So the Wobosto uh, does the three outlets on the driver's side and the factory system runs the three outlets that are on the passenger side. So that way when you're motoring um, or parked and running uh, the engine, you would have your factory heat and air still available. But then when you're off, uh, off grid or camping, you would then have the ability to uh, have the heat uh, up high. So also what you see here is a WeBoost uh, Drive 4GX. We've got two 12 volt outlets we've got um, and then an AC outlet for when the inverter is on. On the other side we just have some storage obviously the wheel well is under there and then if we open this door we have a bit of a mechanical closet uh, just a place to put uh, the short power cord jack um, also some plumbing parts and you know, just some miscellaneous things that you know that you're gonna need access to. So help tidy that up. All right, here you see the interior of the van. Pretty excited about this. We have Schielman seats. These are some uh, aftermarket seats that come from Germany. They are orthotic heated seats. Also have armrests, mat pockets, and a lot of adjustments to really dial this in so that your ride is a lot more comfortable. Um, Shieldman USA is based out of Portland, um, so I was able to go up and pick these up and, and meet uh, Toby up there. Great little operation and beautiful seats. Uh, turned the coin holder in the front dash into the heated seat uh, display, or, or not display, but uh, panel. So that's where the heated seat uh, buttons are. So this did have a factory um, heated seat in the driver, but now it's got a heated seat for both driver and passenger. And as you can see, put a swivel seat on the passenger as well. Um, so that works and is critical, I think, on these vans. Also um, of note is that under, on a passenger van, you would have um, a floor heater um, that is underneath the passenger seat. So 
some modification uh, to get that um, the swivel seat in but also get a duct in there so that duct is actually a salvage from some of the interior paneling that we took off for the build uh, moving over we've got an outlet here USB and AC a little uh, wine box or book box um, stowing for the front curtains or some of them and then we move into the galley so we've got a Corian top uh, I'm really excited about these uh, we've got an undermount stainless steel sink nice and deep and then we've got a cold water faucet uh, this is a cold water only van we don't have hot water uh, running in here induction cooktop I'm really excited about using these I think it's a great use uh, or application for the vans to use the induction cooktop um, as it just doesn't put out open flame and also I think will be a lot more controllable um, for just kind of keeping the van cleaner and, and more mess free so excited about that uh, have a small microwave in here uh, of course this will only work when the inverter is turned on uh, as will the induction cooktop in Del B, this is their um, slide out uh, refrigerator model. They have a stainless steel or a black. This is a 12 volt only refrigerator freezer. I really like the slide out feature primarily because when you're standing here, um, it's just a lot more ergonomic, in my opinion, to reach down and grab things out of the refrigerator or freezer um, from a slide out than it is a door style or dorm style type fridge moving down into here these are the electronics so most everything is fit behind here uh, we have a full Renogy kit we have a 170 amp hour lithium ion uh, battery we've got the Renogy 2000 watt inverter charger and we have the Renogy uh, 50 amp DC to DC uh, charge controller. This uh, takes both the solar and the alternator um, current um, when you're motoring and uh, directs that to the battery. Pretty cool little setup and I'm pretty excited about it. The microwave uh, can come out and then behind that is where I have all of the fuses and uh, some more of the electronics that are tucked back in there. Under the sink, put a tip out in like you would have in the kitchen just to provide some extra storage. Great place for uh, cleaning supplies, sponge, and or even some of your toiletries, toothbrush, toothpaste. Uh, under the sink, a lot of storage, uh, highly customizable. We have our water pump down there. Uh, that's our water supply line and our drain. pantry adjustable shelves um, it's about 20 inches deep so a fair amount of storage in there and uh, should be a good good use um, moving up we have uh, just a little nook great for spices um, just kind of uh, kind of quick grab food items and then we have a little uh, shelf back here uh, that's USB and AC to be shared between bed area and the kitchen. Um, and up we've got the fan controller for the Max Air fan, that's for remote, and then we've got switches for our lights. And then this is the controls for all of our electronics. Uh, the Renogy battery monitor, we have our tank monitor uh, that shows you the status of your gray and fresh water. We've got our pump switch, um, our valve, our, our gray water dump valve, and then also a fan that is in the toilet box uh, to be an exhaust fan for that. The Obasto um, uh, furnace, um, this is their smart temp controller. That's a um, thermostat that you can set to your desired temperature. Has a couple other features on it. Uh, pretty cool little thermostat. And then the Renogy, this is the controller for the uh, inverter charger you need to turn that on for both um, 
getting the charger going, but also, of course, to have the inverter going. And then next to that is the WeBoost uh, interior antenna for bringing that amplified cell signal into the van. Um, this panel actually does open um, so that I can get in there and do uh, any maintenance needed on the electronics. Uh, moving over, we've got another vertical cabinet. Uh, this cabinet, uh, just as cubbies, this would be some clothes storage, um, food storage, camping storage, whatever, whatever you need. And then down below, we've got some more storage that would be great for toiletries and um, cleaning supplies, camping supplies, um, what have you. The bed area, this is a full-size bed, uh, eight inch foam mattress. Um, and then we've got some more nooks in here for the bed area. Stowing some clothes, accessories. Yeah, both the head and the foot of the bed, there's a nice channel there. Um, great place to put some books, your laptop, uh, any electronic devices could be stowed in there. It would be quite safe and out of free, also out of, out of sight or from any of the windows. And then we have the fan, in this case right above, uh, right above the bed. So the Max Air fan again. This is the automatic or the deluxe model that has the remote, so you're able to control it via that. All right. So then, about the one of the last things that we have here is this jump seat. Actually, is a toilet, and so uh, when needing the toilet, um, we can pull this off. Now we have a toilet. This is a basic composting toilet um, with a couple modifications. So this is the Smart John, uh, which I found on eBay. And I'm pretty um, stoked about how it works. So mainly it's a bucket, but it's got the a system for bagging uh, your solids and draining off your liquids. So if it's just single use, you can literally just um, bag it and then kind of be done with it and um, for your solids anyways the uh, liquids are um, the system does come with a tank that the liquid will go into and you can dispose of that um, separately in this case i've tied the gray the, uh, the liquid into the gray water tank so that you'll be able to dump that um, with along with diluted with your gray water and then dump that um, appropriately uh, when and as needed but that should save a lot of um, a lot of the fuss, kind of with with the toilet area, and um, should be a good system. If need be, the toilet seat is removable, comes off, and then the bucket as well, and then the entire box can come off. And I mentioned a fan, so there's a fan that um, is inside this box, and then what it will do is it will draw just kind of from around the bucket and around this area um, when the seat cushion is back on and should eliminate any odors and assist in drying, drying it all out. The ladder is a step stool uh, ladder that came off of Amazon. Really stoked about that. I think that's gonna be a really good, good use and good fit for, for not just this van, but for vans to come. Uh, you see that there's a lot of L-Track on the floor, so this is a piece that goes horizontally, and then back in the garage area we had the two that went front to back, uh, and then though there will be some additional mounts, I'm actually waiting for the client to um, help me determine the exact location of the rest of the tie downs that will go in here. So there it is, it's the interior of our Ford van. Again, this started life as a passenger van, which is why we have the factory headliner in. Um, one thing of note and part of what um, uh, changed and modified a lot of this design is the fact that there is a, a side curtain airbag that goes all the way from um, the front corner of the A-pillar all the way, and it's a continuous airbag that goes all the way to the back. 
So what I've done is I've actually left these channels open um, on either side of the van so that that airbag can deploy. And it's also why there are no upper cabinets uh, in this van. So that way that side curtain airbag can still deploy uh, if and when needed. Hopefully it won't be, but um, just in case, um, everything is there to allow that to happen. Uh, the curtain is a blackout curtain, and that too is mounted to the, uh, to the headliner, but in such a way that it won't keep that airbag from, from deploying and fully extending down. See up here we added some aluminum strips um, if you've ever driven a Ford Transit or really any of these cargo vans you'll know that things uh, up in the storage tray tend not to want to stay there so we added a one inch lip to try and at least allow you know a couple books or, or you know something a little more cubic uh, to stay up in that space this right here would be a light for coming in and out of the van. Uh, it just goes to this single um, cam light right here, uh, flash mounted light right here, and uh, makes for a good reading light, but also um, just your interior, your in, coming in and out of the van. I added a full view, a rear view mirror. So this replaces the factory rear view mirror and uh, makes it a digital uh, LCD screen. Just showing you the image from the back while you're driving and then of course as a backup camera secondary to the factory backup camera this is the cushion for the back of the toilet um, or the jump seat that can double as a little bed tray so that was pretty cool and also didn't show you that this cover for the back of the uh, for the rear ductwork also has a USB um, in that there, um, so the uh, second person has a place to plug in their phone uh, and keep that charged up as well. Uh, I hope these find you well. I hope you're good, and uh, I hope you enjoy. See you.